بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome my beautiful sisters to our weekly lesson In this lesson we learn verses from Quran and we learn authentic sayings of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام and Ramadan Mubarak for all of you, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us all our good deeds. Ramadan is the month of Quran. Ramadan is the month of good deeds. So we have to be careful how we spend it. You have to be wise the way you spend your energy and the way you spend your time. We have to be focusing on what we're doing here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس So in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ramadan month is when Quran was revealed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described Quran as هدى للناس هدى is guidance للناس for people so this Quran is guidance when we learn the verses of Quran, when we learn the authentic sayings of our Prophet والسلام, it is the map for us to go to our final destination. Our destination is the highest level of Jannah. I want to go to the highest level of Jannah without judgment. I want to go to the highest level of Jannah without entering hellfire, not even one second. I want to be happy in the day of judgment. I want to be with my Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. I want to be with the good Muslims. I do not want to be afraid. I do not want to panic. I don't want to regret anything. How do we do that? We follow Quran and we follow the sunnah of our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and described the Quran as hudan lin nasi. So it is guidance for people and then he says this quran has proof this quran has all the rules that we need to know to distinguish between halal and haram what is righteousness and what is evil what is the right things and what are the wrong things quran teaches us the path that we have to be following so we have to follow the rules of Quran. The rules are clear. Little bit of rules are not clear that some Muslims have little bit of difference, which is okay. It is okay to be on different pages in some things. For example, the Prophet والسلام, said, Sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatihi. Start fasting Ramadan when you sight the moon, the crescent, and stop fasting, celebrate Eid when you see the moon of Shawwal, the month after Ramadan. فَإِنْ غَبِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ فَأَكْمِلُوا عِدَّةَ شَعْبَانَ ثَلَاثِينَ So if you couldn't see it, if you couldn't see the moon for any reason, then fast Ramadan um, uh, when you finish Sha'ban 30 days. In another uh, narration, فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ So if you couldn't see the, the, the moon uh, in the day 29 of Sha'ban, then let it be 30 days for Sha'ban and then start fasting for Ramadan. Now there are a lot of differences here. People are talking a lot. People are really, really, sometimes they get up upset sometimes they get annoyed some people become aggressive even in uh, when it comes to these differences if we are living amongst the muslim countries where they're all together next to each other sharing the same night and the same day time then it is so easy for us to know when to start because after maghrib they will be sighting the moon after one hour, two hours, they will say we were able to see it or not. Because after Maghrib, you will be able to see the moon. But because we are in Australia, and Australia is very, very far away from everybody else, it becomes even harder. So now people are becoming 
to uh, groups, a group that follows the Islamic countries. Some people follow their original country, wherever they come from. Uh, some people follow Saudi. They wait for the announcement from Saudi. Some people wait for the moon sighting here in Australia. So this is a difference that we have been going through for ages. Like I, I remember like from 30 years ago, like we are we having the same problems. Every time Ramadan starts, every time Ramadan finishes, every time Dhul Hijjah comes, did Dhul Hijjah start or not? So Eid, people will be like celebrating Eid when others are fasting, not celebrating. What do we do in this case? Just try your best. We are seeking the moon. If someone said the moon was sighted in any place in the world, then we will start fasting. We didn't see the moon. We will not fast as easy as that. But what about if people are maybe on different pages in one house, someone wants to fast and someone is not fasting. Someone is celebrating Eid and someone else is not celebrating Eid based on which moon are we sighting, the moon in Saudi or the moon here in Australia? So let me tell you, basically, if you want to follow the moon sighting in Australia only, then follow it. If you want to follow the moon sighting in Saudi or any other countries, follow it. But do not put someone else down. Do not argue with anybody else. Do not say something wrong to anyone. Do not bully or abuse anybody by saying to them, you are this, you are that, you're doing this, you're not doing that. This is basically more important than moon sighting. Because what is, what is the use of fasting if we are hurting each other with our tongue? What is the point of Praying 20 raka'at, qiyamul layl, taraweeh, whatever you want to call it, in the masjid. If you are going to become aggressively speaking with other people just because they disagree with you. This is not acceptable, my beautiful sisters. We have to be careful the way we speak to each other. If someone fasted yesterday and you decided to fast today, tell them, May Allah accept from you. May Allah accept from all of us. No need to argue with anybody. No need to be angry. No need even to backbite anyone. No need to speak about them mocking or um, in, in a way that feels like it is disrespectful. I think what we have to be focusing on here is respect. We will respect each other, inshallah. And we will respect the choices that we make. You choose to fast on Monday, may Allah accept from you. You choose to fast on Tuesday, may Allah accept from you. We will simply make dua, may Allah accept from all of us. We are all trying to follow the sunnah of our Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. We are all trying to do the right thing. As long as we are trying, Allah knows our intentions. No need to put each other down. No need to force your opinion on anybody. Let them choose. Your son at home, he chooses to follow something, not what you are following. Don't take it personal, honey. Do not take things personal. Do not say, but I am your mother. I am your wife. I am your sister. I know you don't know. No need to say any extra words. Just do what you think is right. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Let's not argue. Let's not say anything to hurt each other. Just do whatever you want and make dua for everyone. Because the Prophet والسلام, when he spoke about fasting, he said, Man lam qawla zuri. Whoever doesn't stop speaking false words, bihi, doing false actions, 
فليس لله حاجة في أن يدع طعامه وشرابه. There's no need for this person to live eating and drinking during Ramadan. Because fasting is not about leaving, drinking and eating. It's not about leaving food and drink. It's about leaving unnecessary words that we are saying. It's leaving the mocking, the putting down, the false words, the false actions, the behavior, the unwanted behavior. So we have to, inshallah, choose to be patient. Inshallah, let Ramadan teach us to be patient. Let Ramadan teach us to be nice to each other. Let's listen to each other. Okay, I am following this. Good for you. I am following this. That's it. End of discussion. We're not going to argue with anyone. We're not going to put anyone down. We're just going to focus on us doing the right things. Because we want to have joy. You don't want to be angry. You don't want to be upset. You don't want to be annoyed. Don't even overthink, my sweetheart. Just relax and enjoy fasting. Enjoy remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Enjoy reciting Quran. Quran wasn't revealed to make us fight and get annoyed and get angry from each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he revealed this Quran for us. Shifa'un, it is healing. Let's heal. Heal the grudges. Heal all the anger. We're not going to be upset from anybody. It is mercy for the believers. Let's have mercy towards each other. Let's grant each other the mercy by not saying any hurtful words, even the look. Let's always be patient, inshallah. Let's listen to each other and let's not be harsh on each other. وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, No one is in the state of loss. No one is a loser except a ظالمين. A ظالمين, they are the losers. They lost the true path. They lost their true selves. A believer is a patient person. A believer is nice and kind and gentle and soft. We are proud of ourselves. Yes, we will tell everybody, I am a Muslim and I am fasting. If you are fasting, you're going to tell everybody, I am fasting and you're proud of yourself. Even if someone else is not fasting in the same day as yours, you say, I am fasting today because I follow moon sighting in Australia or because I follow whatever. Tell them why you are fasting, but don't put them down. Let's focus on harmony. Let's focus on peace here. You choose whatever you want. Allow me to choose whatever I want. And let's be sisters in Islam. You're my sister in Islam. If you do something haram, I will tell you, sweetheart, did you know the Prophet والسلام, said this and said that? I will tell you a verse in Quran. I will tell you what my Prophet والسلام, said, but I will leave it to you to figure out what you want to do with your life. Yes, I will show you that what you're doing is wrong. I'm not going to be shy. I'm not going to clap my hands and say, bravo, if you're doing something haram. But this is with haram. When we do something haram, we will tell each other. But we are going to tell each other nicely. We're not going to become aggressive, inshallah. And now we are going to focus on, inshallah, um, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are going to focus on doing the right things. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, لِلصَّائِمِ farhatan." Two joy, two joys, like, or two times of joy for the person who fasts. Two times. We are going to have joy. We're going to be happy twice when we fast in Ramadan. The first one, إِذَا أَفْطَرَ فَرِحَةً 
When you break your fasting at Maghrib time, you will be happy. It's a joy. I made it for one whole day. Alhamdulillah, I finished fasting all today. So you will be happy with the accomplishment that you were able to finish one whole day. وَإِذَا لَقِيَ رَبَّهُ فَرِحَ بِصَوْبِهِ And the other time of joy is going to be in the day of judgment. Every person who fasts will be happy when we break our fasting after finishing fasting one whole day and in the day of judgment. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, لِلصَّائِمِ فَرْحَتَانِ فَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ فِطْرِهِ The a, a believer who fasts will be happy when he, he or she, when they break their fasting uh, at Maghrib time. And farhatun عند لقاء ربه. And they will be happy when they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to be happy when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want to be happy with your accomplishment of fasting the whole day, then you have to do it the right way. We better fast the right way. We better fast from speaking haram. We better fast from saying unnecessary words. We better fast from looking at haram, from listening to haram, going to places where there is haram. We have to fast from earning haram money. We have to fast from spending our money in the haram way. So we have to be careful that everything that we do, we do it according to Quran and Sunnah. If you want to be happy with your accomplishment, if you want to fast properly, then you have to fast from haram. The, uh, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tilka hududullahi. There are, this is the barrier between halal and haram. It's like, this is the line, red line. Do not cross it. Haram is haram. We keep away from it. Whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, then we will enter Jannah. If you want to enter Jannah, then first you have to do the right things. You have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way Allah ordered you not the way you want. We don't take things personal. It's not about me. It's not about what I want. It's not what about what I chose. We are sisters in Islam. We are brothers and sisters in Islam. We're not going to mock each other. We're not going to say words that hurt each other in front of each other or behind our back because that will be backbiting. Whoever obeys Allah and his messenger and is scared of Allah. Khashya is I am afraid, but I love him. It's fear with love together. You know, when you are in love with someone, you're afraid to make them upset. If you are scared because they're going to be harsh, because they're going to blame you, because they're going to put you down. No, I'm just, I don't want them to be upset because I love them. So that's the fear that we have to have. I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not scared of human beings. We're not scared of people judging us. It's okay. People will judge. It's okay. When people speak about you, don't just focus on them. Uh, she said, he did this. We'll come to that later, inshallah. But right now we're focusing on, we are going to do what, what we think, what we believe is the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Whoever has taqwa, then fa'ulaika humul fa'izun. If you are consciously making your decisions because you know that this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants and this is what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said I'm going to do them and I know why I am doing it I'm not doing things because people in this masjid did it because that sheikh did because that person did because my husband did because my father did 
I don't follow normal people. I follow my Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. When you do something, you better prepare hadith. Why did you do this? Because the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't say because that sheikh said and that imam said. We love the imams, we love the sheikhs, we love them and we respect them, but we don't follow them blindly. I only follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam blindly. That's what we do. So we're not going to sit down here judging each other. We're not going to be upset. Just relax. Take it easy. Don't take it personal. It's okay. It's okay. I'm fasting today and he is fasting tomorrow. It's okay. Subhanallah. This is, these differences have been here for ages. And we're not going to focus on them. If you decided to start fasting, kalas, you're fasting. Now focus on you and your fasting. Don't be like someone who is carrying a, you know, in the old days, how they carried water. They had them in bags made of leather. So a leather bag, they put the water. And then when they want to drink, they drink from it. And then they close it. Now, some people are carrying like these leather bags. But guess what? There is a hole under it. From down, there is a hole. They fill it with water. The water is dripping from down and it's leaking. So they fill it with water, but the water is going away from the other side. And after a while they come, where is the water? The water is gone because there is a hole. There is a leakage. It was leaking. That's exactly what you do with your hasanat. You make hasanat. You think that you're fasting. You go to the masjid to pray Qiyamul Layl, Taraweeh, and then you recite Quran every day. But then you're talking about people who judge others, speak about them by putting them down or gossiping. And then what happens? You're losing your hasanat. Do not make hasanat from here and lose them from here, my love. Keep your hasanat. Because the challenge is not making hasanat. No, it's so easy to make hasanat. We can make millions and trillions of hasanat in one day. But do you know what is the challenge? Is to keep it in your scale of hasanat. Because losing the hasanat is easier than making them. It's easy to make hasanat, but easier to transfer them from your Hasanat account to somebody else. How? When you gossip, when you backbite, when you talk about them and put them down. So now we are going to focus on doing Ramadan, inshallah, the way Allah wants from us. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Kullu ummati yadkhuluna al-jannata. All people of my ummah, all Muslims, my followers, will enter Jannah illa except man Abba, except who refuses. Abba refused. If you say Abba ayyakul, he refused to eat. So some people, they refuse. So the companion said, Ya Rasulullah, peace be upon you. Who refuses to enter Jannah? We all want to go to Jannah. Who refuses to go? He said, Man ata'ani dakhal al-Jannah. Who obeys me, who, obe who obeys my rules, he will enter Jannah. Wa man asani, and who disobeys me, faqad aba. He refused. Some people refuse to follow the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They just follow their desires. They follow what is easier for them. They follow shaitan. They follow people. We don't follow people. We follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, that's what we do. If we do haram, haram will take us to the wrong path.
Yes, we have to keep away from haram. We have to keep striving. We have to keep trying, keep learning, keep changing, keep improving because we want that joy. We want to accomplish fasting Ramadan properly and we want to have joy. The proper joy is when you are in Jannah and the closed and, and the gate will be closed behind you. That's the real joy, subhanAllah. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the people of Jannah by saying that they waqalu and they said, when you enter Jannah, subhanAllah, hopeful inshallah, we will be from them. When they are in Jannah, waqalu and they said, and, and he, he didn't say, they will say. They said, like it happened, khalas, subhanAllah, as if this life finished, as if the people of Jannah entered Jannah, it happened, and they said, subhanAllah, waqalu, what did they say? Waqalu, alhamdulillahi alladhi adhaba anna alhazan. Alhamdulillah, sadness is gone. Al-hazan can be sadness. It can also be difficulty. Alhamdulillah, difficulty is gone. We don't have to fast. We don't have to pray. We don't have to cover our bodies and watch if it is tight or not. I don't have to watch my tongue, the words that I say. I have to be, I don't have to watch my thoughts and clear them. I don't have to shift my emotions and, and I don't have to work on anything anymore. No homework anymore. Subhanallah. So when they enter Jannah, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, <laughs> الذي أذهب عنا الحزن. Alhamdulillah, difficulty is gone. Alhamdulillah, it's all uh, finished. Okay, that's my son's school. I'm gonna pause the. I'm gonna pause because pause, pause, pause. There's no pausing here. I uh, pause, pause. Okay, again, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I don't know if we are continuing or from the beginning. I have no idea, but so. When people of Jannah enter Jannah, they are going to be saying, Alhamdulillah, alladhi adhaba anna al -hazan. So in this dunya, we are striving, we are trying, we keep trying and, and we want to do the right things, inshallah. But the minute we enter Jannah, inshallah, we will forget all that uh, effort, subhanallah. And then you will see the, uh, the reward Inna Rabbana Lagafurun Shakur. Our Lord is Ghafurun, the most forgiving. Allah is, is going to forgive our mistakes because we are human beings. Yes, we make mistakes. We're not going to sit down picking on each other on our mistakes because we are human beings. We have to let go. The mistakes that are normal, they are small. We can just let go and continue. Uh, our path the big mistakes then we have to communicate and talk about them we can find solutions for everything but when it comes to mistakes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving he will forgive our mistakes so let's forgive each other and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shakur he will thank you by rewarding you so whatever you do here you're going to do it for the sake of Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you in the day of judgment. If you wait for anything in this dunya, if you have any expectations, if you want something from someone in this life, honey, you're going to be dis disappointed because people are people. Sometimes you do something for them and they forget. It's okay. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't forget. When you are nice, when you are patient, when you do whatever you do, just do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be sincere. Let everything that you do be for him. Ask Allah to help you. Ask Allah to guide you. Ask Allah for the strength. Because we're here still talking about the joy that we're going to have. And it is connected to iftar time. Either aftar or fariha means when the believer at the iftar time, when Maghrib comes, you will be happy. Don't forget in the middle of your happiness, don't forget to make dua. 
Before Adhan, raise up your hands. Whatever you're struggling with, it's your chance now. The dua of the fasting person is accepted, inshallah. So before Maghrib, sit down for a few minutes. Put your phone aside. Don't speak. Sit down, raise up your hands, and start asking Allah. Ask Allah to guide you. Ask Allah to grant you all the strength that you need. If you are sick, ask Allah to heal you. Even if you are emotionally drained, ask Allah to heal you emotionally or mentally or even physically. Plus, make a lot of istighfar. At Maghrib time, let it be, ask Allah to forgive you. Forgive my mistakes, Ya Allah, big or small, out or inside. Sometimes the the sins we commit are, are maybe like um, deep inside. Your sins can be thoughts, judging people or judging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sins maybe can be if you compare between yourself and others, your child to other someone's child. Your sins can be a feeling. It can be emotions. You can hold grudges against others. It can be jealousy. It can be whatever it can be. Ask Allah to forgive you. Ask Allah to purify you. Ask Allah to purify your heart every day, every day, every day. Let this be one of our du'as. We want Allah to purify us. Ask Allah to keep you away from haram. And ask him to keep haram away from you. Whatever haram you're going through now and you feel like you are attached to something and you can't leave it, Ya Rab, make me hate music. Ya Rab, make me hate makeup. Ya Rabbi, give me a confidence, like high self-esteem that I don't need to have the urge to beautify myself when I go out. Ask Allah, ask Allah, what do you want? What is your weakness? And ask Allah to help you and grant you that strength that you need. Before Maghrib, my beautiful sisters, raise up your hands and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are mentally drained, emotionally drained, make ruqya as well during Ramadan while you are fasting. While you are fasting, the best ruqya you can do in the daytime, subhanallah, you can make ruqya. Recite Surah Al-Fatiha with the intention of healing. Bismillah three times and then say seven times A'udhu bi'izzatillahi wa qudratihi min sharri ma ajid wa uhadhar I seek refuge, I seek protection from Allah against whatever I have now and what I might have. If you feel low, if you feel confused, if you are lost, if you are suffocating, if you are finding any difficulties in your life this is your chance to ask Allah for healing rely on Allah be positive that Allah can hear you and then you hear adhan when adhan is on put something in your mouth the sunnah of the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam to put a date in your mouth eat one date drink a sip of water and then say after that, ذهب الظمأ وابتلت العروق وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله. This is the dua that we need to do in Ramadan. This is the authentic dua. ذهب الظمأ thirst is gone. وابتلت العروق the throat is not dry anymore. وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله. الأجر is the reward is confirmed, inshallah, with the will of Allah. If you want that minute for your reward, for your good deeds to be confirmed that minute, because every day there is a list of Muslims, the list of people who are saved from hellfire. Inna lillahi utaqa'a fi kulli layla. are People who are protected fully from hellfire. I want to be protected from hellfire. Then you have to know what you're doing. So I'm going to watch my thoughts. I'm going to watch my emotions. 
I'm going to watch the words that I speak. I'm going to watch my eyes. What are they looking at? I'm going to watch my ears. What am I listening to? I'm going to watch my behavior, the way I speak to people, the tone of my voice, the body language. No need for aggression, my beautiful sisters. What is the point of being fasting when you are stressed, angry? What is the benefit of fasting if I feel I'm better than others? If we have pride and we think that we are better than others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by himself that they are all going to be asked and judged in the day of judgment. Of what they were doing. Everything that we do right now is watched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is watching you. Allah is watching your behavior. Allah is watching everything that you do. Make sure that you're not doing the, the good deeds, but losing them from the other side. Like, for example, some Muslims now, they are fasting in Ramadan, but they earn haram money. They lie, they cheat. Do you know how many people lie to the government to take money by lying? And they are fasting and they buy food from that money. Some people take bribery. Some people use other people. If you are using someone and the money you have, you gain from using other people, you go and you buy food to eat for iftar. It doesn't make any sense, wallahi. It doesn't make any sense. What is the point of fasting? When you are planning for Eid now, you're going to the shops buying um, like tight clothing and you're buying makeup and accessories to wear them on Eid. Oh, I'm going to go to Eid prior and you're wearing tights and you're wearing the, buying this perfume that I'm going to put on Eid. I'm going to buy the makeup and the accessories that I'm going to be celebrating Eid with. What is the point of leaving food and drinks then? We have to be careful. Don't waste your hasanat. Don't come in the day of judgment and then you'll find, where is the hasanat of my fasting? I, I fasted the whole month of Ramadan. And then you'll find only hunger and tired legs or tired uh, eyes because you're just there reciting the Quran and but you're not implementing it be careful my sweetheart be careful if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your fasting truly then you need to keep away from haram we have to keep away from haram if we want our fasting to be accepted subhanallah like the Prophet uh, salatu wassalam, said that um, in this hadith, like, I don't know how it starts, but he said, Inna al Jannah. Jannah is closer to you than your shiraka na'lihi. Like, Jannah is closer to you than your shoes. And hellfire is close as well. Jannah is so close. The minute we see the angel of death, you can consider yourself ready to go to Jannah. The minute I see the angel of death, then the person can consider themselves that they are already in hellfire because they're not going to be in hellfire, but it is the preparation for that. It is the haram that we have to be um, aware of now. We are going to be, inshallah, away from haram because the Prophet والسلام, said, if a servant of Allah fasts one day for the sake of Allah, one day you fast sincerely for the sake of Allah, Allah will keep you away from hellfire for 70 years. I am not even 70 years 
for every one day I fast, I will be away from hellfire for 70 years. But that is not any fasting. It's not to keep away from eating and drinking only. But the Prophet والسلام, said, Man saama Ramadan, imanan wahtisaban. It is if you fast believing that fasting is an obligation from Allah. I am fasting because Allah ordered me. I'm not going to keep looking at the time when it's Maghrib. Oh, oh my stomach, my head, oh, tired, nagging, complaining, angry and stressed. What is the point? I believe imanan. I believe that I am fasting for the sake of Allah. Wahtisaban. I seek the reward from Allah by fasting. So when I'm going to be nagging, when I'm going to be complaining, when I'm going to be stressed, we're not going to stress ourselves and put burden on ourselves. Do whatever you can do. What is the point of reciting a lot of Quran, praying at night, if you are going to become stressed and aggressive? No point, honey. Pray rak'atayn, qiyamul layl, just rak'atayn, sincerely for the sake of Allah. For those who have little young children, demanding children, you have to take care of them. You have to take care of the house and you have to take care of other things. Rak'atayn, qiyamul layl, but with love, enjoy it and say a lot of dua in your sujood and ask Allah to accept it from you sincerely. Better than abandoning your kids and they are fighting and you are just doing ibadah and you're stressed from your kids. That's not. Because taking care of your kids is ibadah. When you answer your child's questions, you are in ibadah. That's also worshipping Allah. You're worshipping Allah. When you play with your children, you are worshipping Allah. You think worshipping Allah, good deeds are only reciting Quran and praying Qiyamul Layl. No, if you play with your child and you are patient, your kindness, your patience, your gentle attitude with your kids is ibadah as well. And Allah will reward you for it. Your smile, when you smile to your son, smile to your daughter, give them a hug. You have to be extra nice in Ramadan. Let them see how, wow, in Ramadan, my mom becomes more patient. In Ramadan, my mom becomes extra nice. Extra nice doesn't mean buying them things and taking them to places. No, extra nice means you're going to listen to them without judging them, without blaming them. You're not going to pick on their mistakes you're not going to sit down giving them instructions, 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 and, and always, you're just always serious. Smile and give them hugs, listen to them, do some activities with them. That's also ibadah. As a mother, every time you sit down with your kids is ibadah. It is never a waste of time. Spending some time with your husband, chatting in halal things, not fighting, not gossiping or backbiting. If you just chat with your husband, it is not a waste of time, honey. Sit down and spend some time with your husband. Spend some time with your family members. Call your father, your mother, check on them. You don't have to see them for hours, just checking on them for a few minutes. Silatul Raham. Silatul Raham doesn't have to be, I have to, Silatul Raham, that like you have to keep the toys with family members. It doesn't mean that you have to invite all your family members in Ramadan and get exhausted and cook a lot of food. This is not Silatul Raham. Silatul Raham is just to check on them. Be nice to them. Be patient. Let's leave the invitations until after Ramadan. Let's make invitations less during Ramadan. And the money that we were going to spend on cooking and buying 
junk food. Let's, let's send it to the poor. There are a lot of Muslims who need this money now more than ever. There are millions of Muslims who are fasting and they don't have anything to eat. Instead of wasting the money, wasting the energy in the kitchen, cooking all these meals, let's send the money to the real poor people. Whatever you give for the sake of Allah, Allah will give it back to you. Allah will give it back to you. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِأَنفُسِكُمْ Whatever sadaqah you give for the poor, it will come back to you. وَمَا تُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا بِتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ When you give sadaqah for the sake of Allah, you only give it for the sake of Allah. Because some people will invite. It is social obligations. Social obligations are not for the sake of Allah. Social obligations, I need to invite them. I have to, but I hate it. I'm not really enjoying it. I just have to. It is an obligation. When are going to be rewarded if we do that? You're going to waste hours of your time in the kitchen. You're wasting your energy and you're not going to be rewarded for it. If you're not into doing something, then do it only for the sake of Allah. Give the money. To the real poor who really need it. Whatever you give for the sake of Allah, Allah will give it back to you. Allah will make it up for you. Allah will Allah knows how much you spent and He will give it back to you. But He will put barakah in your money as well. Allah will give you even more. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ Whatever you give for the sake of Allah, in Ramadan or other than Ramadan, Allah knows. Allah knows every dollar you spend. If you are spending it for social obligations, that is not for the sake of Allah. Be careful, my beautiful sisters. We're not going to do social obligations because we want people to be pleased with us. I do not want people to be upset with me. So I have to cook a lot of food. No, let them be upset, honey. You're not going to cook a lot of food and waste it in the garbage because people will be upset. It's their choice. People have the choice to be upset or to be nice or to be good or to be happy. It's their choice. My choice is I'm going to do the halal. I'm not going to cook more than what I have to. I'm not going to put any food in the garbage bin. We're going to put every food that we still have in the fridge and we will eat it the next day. Don't waste a lot of money. Don't waste a lot of effort in the kitchen just on food and on people. And the, these brothers and sisters who are hungry all over the world, it's our responsibility to give them. Al Muslim Akhu Al Muslim. A Muslim is the brother. And the sister of, of, of another Muslim. Our brothers and our sisters everywhere. In Gaza, in Syria, in Iraq, everywhere. Those who are in Somal. People who are hungry. It's my responsibility and your responsibility to feed them. Because every hungry person is hungry. Because there is another Muslim who is overeating. Every time I overeat... I am taking it from the mouth of a hungry Muslim. We're not going to overeat in Ramadan. We're not going to overbuy in Ramadan. We're not going to over-celebrate in Eid. We're not going to buy a lot of things. We're going to put every extra dollar that we have to the people who are really in need. Yes, we have to give them. We have to feed them. It's not fair. We cook a lot of food for people who are not even hungry, leaving our brothers and sisters hungry. And they are thirsty. They only need water. They just want bread. They just want bread for the sake of Allah. No Muslim should be hungry in Ramadan. And this is our this is our job now. We have to feed them. Those who give money. 
بالليل والنهار at night or in the daytime سرا وعلانية secretly or publicly فلهم أجرهم عند ربهم they are going to be rewarded by their Lord ولا خوف عليهم they're not going to be scared in the day of judgment ولا هم يحزنون and they are not going to be sad if you do not want to be sad in the day of judgment, if you do not want to panic in the day of judgment, if you do not want to be regretting anything in the day of judgment, then you better do the right things today. We choose to be patient, inshallah. We choose to give for the sake of Allah those who really need our giving. We're going to feed the poor, the real poor, and we're not going to take care of the social obligations. Social obligations are not obligations in Islam. In Islam, we have to give those who are in need. We're going to, inshallah, provide them with whatever they need. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the straight path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ Whoever believes in Allah, يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ Allah will guide his heart. Allah will guide your heart if you really want the truth. If you really want to please Allah, if your goal is the highest level of Jannah, Allah will guide you to what is right, what is wrong. Allah will guide you to what is goodness and what is evil. Allah will guide you to what is halal and what is haram. You just have to purify your intention. Let's have the intention that, inshallah, we want to worship Allah the way he wants, not the way we want. We want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he wants, not the way people want. We will obey Allah, not people. We will, we will obey Allah and we will obey the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, but we are going to respect people. We're not going to um, argue with anybody. We're not going to put anybody down. We're not going to be picking on anyone. We're just going to respect everybody. But we are going to be focusing on doing the right things, inshallah. Ask Allah to go to the highest level of Jannah without judgment every day at Maghrib time. Maghrib time, every ruku'ah, every prayer. Ask Allah to go to the highest level of Jannah without judgment. You have to know what you want. You have to have clear goals. I don't want to be punished in the grave, not even one second. I don't want to go to hellfire, not even one second. Not any Jannah. We want to go to the highest level of Jannah, inshallah, al-firdaws al-a'la. If you don't have clear goals, you will be lost in this life. If you don't have clear goals, you're going to be confused. My goal is to obey Allah and obey the authentic sayings of my prophet. That's my goal. And that's what we're going to be learning. And that's what we have to be practicing. And that's what we will be doing, inshallah, starting from today. We are going to say the du'as that our prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and Allah taught us in Quran. And we are going to say um, du'as in general. You can say, say the du'a. If you are at the iftar time, just say dua, any language, any way, just say it from your heart. Ask Allah to guide you, my love. This is what we want, inshallah. And we want, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us. So we have to keep away from haram. We will keep away from every haram bite. And we will boycott these companies. We're going to boycott every company that helps the... Uh, the enemy boycotting is a must inshallah we will do that and we are more than happy to do that every company that helps the enemies it's a must for us to boycott them we're not gonna eat from their dates we're not gonna eat from their food we're not gonna have from their uh, goods nothing inshallah and we will keep away from them and we will eat only halal food we will earn only halal money. Some people are earning haram money and then they want their dua to be accepted. A person who earns money from haram source, a person who eats haram food, their dua is not going to be accepted. 
if you want your dua to be accepted at the iftar in your sujood during Ramadan, then you have to make sure that you're going to keep away from the haram money. One example and only one example I'm going to give about the haram money. I received a lot, a lot, a lot of questions about women who do babysitting. Be babysitting um, or they take children to school. They bring children from their school. They stay with them until their family come from their work or whatever. This is something the government pays for you. The government pays something and you pay something for people who do it. A lot of Muslims are manipulating the government and they are earning more than what they have to. They're using people and they are lying. We shouldn't lie to the government. You have to say exactly there are conditions, there are requirements that you have to be doing to be paid. We're not allowed to lie. We're not allowed to say, I do this and this and this, and you're not doing half of them. We're not allowed to lie to the government to earn money, and we are not allowed to earn money by lying. This is something I just wanted to confirm. If you want your money to be um, if you wanted your dua to be accepted by Allah during Ramadan, make sure that every bite you eat is halal. Make sure that every dollar that you earn is halal, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the straight path. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all our good deeds, to guide us to the uh, halal and to keep away from haram to guide us to goodness to keep away from evil to guide us to the right path the straight path that he wants us to stay on may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you all may allah accept from all of you my beautiful sisters subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته